Hi students, let us start with our new chapter, Separation of Substances. In our daily life, there are many instances when we notice a substance being se separated from a mixture of material. The tea leaves are separated from the liquid with a strainer while preparing tea. Is it? While preparing tea, we will strain the liquid with a strainer. Is it? That time, what substances you will get? What will separate from that mixture? We separate the tea powder or the tea leaf. Is it? From the mixture. Green is separated from the stalks while harvesting. Is it? While harvesting the, uh, the grains. Grains means like uh, wheat, rice, etc. is there. Is it? We will separate it from the stalks. Milk or curd is churned to separate the butter. Is it? The same process. Butter is separated from the milk. As we learned in chapter 3, we green cotton to separate its seed from the fiber. Perhaps you might have eaten salted dahlia or poha. Is it? You have eaten. Is it? If you found that it had chilies in it, you may have carefully taken them out before eating. If you have added uh, chilies in the poha or the dahlia, you have to be careful while eating. Is it? Suppose you are given a breakfast containing mangoes and guava and asked to separate them. What would you do? Pick out one kind and place them in a separate container, right? Is it easy to separate the mangoes and the guavas kept in the same bowl? Seems easy. But what if the materials we want to separate are much smaller than mangoes or guava? What we will do? Imagine you are given a glass of sand with salt mixed in it. You have given a glass of sand with salt mixed in it. Is it possible? No, it's impossible. Even to think of separating salt from this mixture, it's very difficult to sa separate the sand and the salt from the mixture by picking out the grains of sand by hands. Is it? Activity 1. In column 1 of table 5.1 are given a few process of separation. The purpose of separation and the way separated components are used is mentioned in column 2 and 3 respectively. However, the information given in column 2 and 3 is jumbled up. Can you match each process with its purpose and the way separated components are used? Listen to the table. Why do we do separate substances? See, the first is separation process. Understand? Next, the second column, purpose for which we do the separation. For what purpose we are doing this separation? First column is separation process. What kind of process are we are using to separate components? And the second column is what is the purpose of this separation? And the third column, what do we do with the separated components? First column, first one is separate the stones from the rice. What is the purpose of separating stones from the rice? To separate two different but useful components. The rice is useful or we have to separate the stones from the rice to use the rice. We have separated the stones from the rice. What do we do? We throw away the solid component. Stone is solid, so we will throw, just throw away. And the second is churning milk to obtain butter. The second one is, what is the second separation process? Churning milk to obtain butter. What is the purpose? To remove non-useful components. Is it? What is the non-useful component? Actually, it is, it is useful. The butter is useful. But when we separate the butter from the milk, the milk will be thin. Next, what we will do with the separate component? We throw away the impurities. We throw away the impurities means the butter we are separating from the milk and we will separate it and we will kept aside. That's it. We won't throw away actually, is it? Next, the third one, separate tea leaves. While making tea, we have to remove the impurities or the harmful components. What, what we will do? We use both the components. We see that before we use a substance, we need to separate harmful or non-harmful sub substances that may be mixed with it. Understand? We have to remove the useful and the non-useful substances from the mixture. Sometimes we separate even useful components if we need to use them separately. For example, churning milk. We remove the butter and we use it separately. While making chapatis, rotis, we will apply this butter on it. Or we can eat this butter directly. The substances to be separated may be particles of different sizes or materials. 
This may be in any three states. See, we have separated stones, butter and the tea leaves. We have separated the three types of components. All these are of three different states. The solid, liquid or gas forms of the substances. Is it? So, first we remove the stone. The stone is of solid state and we separated the butter is of it's not liquid but it's very soft and so how do we separate substances mix it together if they have so many different properties how do we separate let's listen to the next portion method of separation we will discuss some simple methods of separating substances that are mixed together you may come across some of these methods being used in day-to-day -day activities method of separation first method is first and the most common method that is hand picking is it we are separating stones from the rice using your hands that is simply we will call as hand picking bring a packet of food grains purchased from a shop to the classroom now spread the grains on a sheet of paper do you find only one kind of grain on the sheet of paper and these pieces of stones has broken grains and a particle of any other grain in it. Now, now remove with your hands the pieces of stone, husk and other grains from it. This method of hand picking can be used for separating slightly larger sized impurities like pieces of dirt, stone and husk from wheat, rice or pulses. Understand? This hand picking method using your hands, we can separate these larger sized stones, husk and other dirt pieces from the rice and wheat or like any other or from any other grains. The quantity of such impurities is not usually very large. In such situations, we find that hand picking is a convenient method of separating substances. That is what they are saying is, this, it's easy to remove stones from the rice because the quantity of stones in the rice is less. So it's easy. The convenient method is hand picking. The next method of separation is threshing. We must have seen bundles of wheat or paddy stalks lying in fields after harvesting the crops. The stalks are dried in the sun before the grain is separated from them. Each stalk has many grain seeds attached to it. Have you ever seen the paddy field? In that paddy field, there will be stalks, paddy stalks are there. That means the small stem-like portion, that's what we call stalk. At the, at the tip of the stalks, we can see the grain. Imagine the number of seeds in hundreds of bundles of stalks lying in the field. How does the farmer separate grain seeds from those bundles of stalk? One may pluck mangoes or guavas from the trees. But grain seeds are much smaller than mangoes or guavas. You know that, is it? So plucking them from their stalks would be impossible. Plucking each grain from the stalk is not possible as we pluck mangoes, guavas or like bigger fruits. How does one separate grain seeds from their stalks? What process they will use? The process that is used to separate uh, grains from stalk etc. is threshing. That process is we call threshing. If we want to separate a large amount of grains, we can't using the first method hand picking. We have to use the process threshing. What is this process? In this process, the stalks are beaten to free the grain seeds. In this process, what the farmer is doing? The stalks are beaten to free the grain seeds. Understand? See, in the picture, the farmer is doing the same process. See, we can see in the picture, we can see the bundles of stalks are there. So, what they will do? They take each small bundles and they will beat them to free the grain seeds. Threshing is done with the help of bullocks. Machines are also used to thresh large quantities of grains. Next method is winnowing. Make a mixture of dry sand with sawdust or powdered dry leaves. Keep the mixture on a plate or a newspaper which mixture the dry sand with sand dust or powdered dry leaves. Look at this mixture carefully. Can the two different components be made out easily? Are the sizes of particles of the two components similar? 
would it be possible to separate the components by hand picking i mean dry sand with sawdust or powdered dry leaf is it easy to separate the components using hand now take your mixture to an open ground and stand on a raised platform here the picture see standing on a raised platform what they are doing put the mixture in a plate or sheet of paper okay hold the plate or sheet of paper containing the mixture at your shoulder height like this showing in this picture hold the plate or the newspaper or paper at your shoulder height then tilt it slightly see tilt it slightly so that the mixture slides out slowly it's an easy method not easy but time taken method see what happens the husky separator grains coming down see the grains coming grains coming down the husky get separator do both the components sand and dust fall at the same time is there a component that blows away yes of course the husky blows away did the wind manage to separate the two components did the wind managed to separate the two components this method of separating components of a mixture is called winnowing winnowing is used to separate heavier and lighter components of a mixture by wind or by blowing air so winnowing is used to separate heavier and lighter components here in this mixture there is grains uh, husk is there is it dust particles are there so with the help of this wind they are getting separated or either by wind or by blowing air this method is commonly used by farmers to separate lighter husk particles from heavier seeds of grain the lighter particle this winnowing is mainly used to separate lighter particles from the heavy seeds of grains next the husk particles are carried away by the wind husk is the lighter particle it will be carried away by the wind next the seeds of grain get separated and form a heap near the platform for winnowing we have seen in the picture that one lady is standing by holding that plate or the paper so she is standing in a raised platform is it so near to the platform there will form a heap of grains and the husk will be separated it will flow away this separated husk is used for many purposes such as fodder for cattle it's used for it's used to give cows buffaloes next process sieving activity 4 bring a sieve and a small quantity of flour from home to the class sieve the flour to separate any impurities in it impurities means um, unwanted substances now make a fine powder of chalk pieces and mix it with flour what will happen can we separate the flour and the powdered chalk by sieving is it possible sieving is used when components of a mixture have different sizes sieving is possible only when the components of the mixture have different sizes okay students that is all for today's session we can meet again through the next video and if you like the explanation and the teaching method of my channel please subscribe it and like the video and follow me Thank you